Welcome to episode two of the 1% Club. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Matthew Davis Binge, and this episode is called Dream Big and Stop Being Embarrassed About It. So let's get straight into it. We've got 2018 just around the corner, and I think this is a natural time of year for people to start thinking about their goals for the future, you know, short term, long term goals for themselves, business, or even their employees. Goal setting is definitely a, a tricky area to navigate because our egos love to get involved with defining what those goals should be. If you're like me, um, you'll probably wanna qualify your goals with sometimes with excuses what, as, as to why they never didn't happen or may not happen in the future. Or even sometimes being a little bit embarrassed to articulate your your ambitions or your dreams. Without a doubt, I think it's time we uh, we drop these excuses and stop with the embarrassment and actually maybe be a bit be proud of 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 our ambition and, and what we want to do. You know, I think I think in the t- modern society, I think we have a hard time being ballsy about this. And I, for one, I'm I'm a sucker to that too. I find myself worried about what other people will think or think of me or think of what I'm saying and and that's that's, that's so ridiculous to to be worrying about I don't know whether that's a a nature or nurture um, thing but it's definitely ingrained in me you know thinking about what people will say um, will they think I'm stupid if I tell them that I do want to go for the big time Uh, what if I fail will they say you know I told you so or maybe laugh behind my back or talk to other people or if it doesn't work out, will they think that I just failed under the pressure? These, this is all stupid stuff to be thinking about, but I know that I, I think like that, and, and I guarantee that some of you listening will think that as well. And because of this fear of ju- being judged or the judgment, some of us never end up making those you know, lofty goals or ambitions. And we seem to remain content in our mediocrity when really we, we're not, we're not happy to be there. You know, there's people like me might seem ambitious, but there's because we, because of that fear of judgment. And there's when you do qualify your goals with someone else asking for their approval, it sometimes can feel like you're buffering yourself for the disappointment of not meeting the goal and acknowledging all the judgment and that, that you feel on that others might pass on you for making the goal in the first place. It's stupid. Who knows? What I do know is that I think it's it's time we stop giving ourselves that out, that excuse. Let's get down to it. Are your goals that big they embarrass you? Now, when you're goal setting, I really think that's this is the way to go. Set those goals. Set, be unrealistic. The first characteristic that should be included in your goals is they, sh- they should be scary. Scary yet ob- obtainable, not like you want to own the moon one day. I mean, like a, a, it needs to be obtainable goals. Um, when you're setting goals, this is, this is probably the most important part that often gets overlooked. Now, it is okay for some of your goals to be, to be common and rewarding, like things like getting a new car or going on holiday or buying, buying that special gift or treat. But when you are doing that, why not go reach for the stars? I know it's a cliche thing to say, but reach for the stars with it. Go as big as possible. Strive for the outcomes way bigger than what you'd ordinarily desire. Uh, you know, like talking about our business, maybe we're not just going to set a goal this year to increase our end of year profits by, let's say, 35%. Our goal this year is going to be we're going to strive to triple it. Like make make no mistake about it. And I think that's important. You know, reach for the stars with anything you do. And if you are, if you do want to get go for a new car, for example, slap a photo of a red hot Ferrari on your goal board and and be okay with that. I think you'll be surprised to see how much more you accomplish um, in life by stretching your brain that way. 
the second characteristic that should be included in this this whole goal setting process is that should be there should be a big a big purpose associated with the why aspect that you're you're setting these goals we all have these reasons why we get out of bed each day and run the rat race you know um we get in our routines and to a certain extent we follow the system of working to live not the other way around if your mission this year is to make something big happen then you must recognize the reason uh behind that you know like if you want a, if you do want that new car just because it will make you happy then that's fine don't be ashamed to admit that that some of your purposes that they are they are self-serving and that is all right just be aware that whatever your purpose may be if you associate it directly with your goal the results will be so much better now i would massively encourage you to do, write your goals and you know ambitions down for 2018 but if you are setting goals i ta- challenge you to take a look at what they are at the moment and ask yourself the following questions this is really important are your goals specific measurable and obtainable are your goals much bigger than last year are your goals are your goals on your list scary to think about are there goals on the list that you are embarrassed to share with your friends family or colleagues is there a, a purpose associated with achieving each one of your goals and is it indicated now i, I heard someone online talk about how a tiny percent of people continue with their own personal development by taking courses you know self-education online learning reading books staying ahead of the times and that honestly i think this falls back on what we spoke about earlier about just being happy with a life of of averageness you know not all not all people aspire to dream big but they but everyone has the ability to do that we all have a responsibility for the outcomes of our own life and I honestly think that we have to push ourselves harder and more often and if, and if I can help anyone do that with this podcast then we'll, we'll be winning. Going back to ambition, I think, it, I think it gets a bad rap. I think it's a trait that pushes someone towards success can sometimes turn into a, it can sometimes turn into a game um, where winning isn't about achieving, it's about beating others. Now, Gary, Gary Vaynerchuk, who I'm, who I'm a massive fan of, um, talks about there's nothing wrong building the biggest skyscraper in the city. But in, doing, in building your own skyscraper, don't be pulling down everyone else's. You know, just There's nothing wrong with wanting to be the biggest and the best, but do it the right way. You know, this ambition we're talking about, if you channel it correctly, you really can bring in real results and results the right way. So I've written down six things here about how you can harness your ambition and focus on success over beating the competition. Number one, set your goals but don't share them. Ambitious people are very goal orientated and are always striving towards the next accomplishment. Um, But a healthy ambition does it also involve keeping some of those goals goals dreams and ambitions that really big ones that weigh heavy on your heart keeping them private um psychologists have actually found out that when you tell someone um your goal this is a fact it is less likely to happen when you tell someone you, it actually tricks your mind into the feeling that it's already done and because you felt that satisfaction you're actually less motivated to do the work necessary in the first place. So not not with everything, but with those ones that weigh heavy in your heart, keep them to yourself. Keep them to yourself or or certainly only share them with your your close friends and family or support network. Number two, they are willing to take risks. Ambitious people tend to act with purpose but allow themselves room to explore and experiment um, and definitely discover and in that discovery, there's quite often a breakthrough will emerge from a from a difficult time, and I know I know that from from personal experiences. Number three, they expose themselves to new ways of thinking. 
ambitious people um, without question these days need to expose themselves to these new way of thinking I for one would love to talk to and learn from people who are different from me you know open and open to dialogue with acquaintances or even select strangers that you know from your industry and you'll be surprised you may undercover uncover interesting opportunities doing this forces you to grow often in unexpected ways number four they are focused on execution now often people spend the most time working on building their own skill set or researching solutions or possibilities while it is is wise to craft and execute a strategy for that for example ambitious people put the main emphasis on pulling the trigger you know you've got to be an executor who gets it done if your execution is poor and this goes across the board by the way if your execution is poor then nothing else matters number five they don't compete with other people as we spoke about earlier your biggest competitor looks you in the mirror every day that's the only person you need to be worried about. Um, you've got to avoid the trap of falling into comparing yourself with others or measuring your success about what other people have got or he's got this or he's got that or she's done this. Like, who, who cares? Just concentrate on your own alleyway. Number six, they surround themselves with other ambitious people. Now, this is, for me, this is absolutely massive. And I'm probably going to do another podcast purely on this topic it's about applying the power of proximity by networking with clusters of other successful people the late great Jim Rohn said you've probably heard this a million times on the internet but this is true and not only is it true it's an absolute fact you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with find role models befriend them learn from them make mentors Make friends with smarter people, people that are smarter than you or are much more successful in the fields that you're interested in or are, are currently in. Um, it's, I mean, it's just so important. Um, so, yeah, that's my, that's my list of six. Anyway, that's the end of this week's podcast. Thank you so much for listening. We've got loads more content to come, but stay tuned. Thanks for listening. Hit the like, subscribe and follow if you want to hear more. I've been Matt Davis Binge and remember... Keep the faith, it'll all be worth it in the end. Let me create more.